Well, welcome Salem's Lot friends and family. We are the Salem's Lot minority and I'm joined, I'm Danny and I'm joined with my good friends and my brothers, Mr. Sam Straub and Ben Otaviano. You guys know him as Boogeyman Ben and I will definitely put links to their YouTube channels into the description below. But guys, we just lost uh, one of the greats. I mean, you know, we love this movie and probably most of the people watching this right now love this movie. And there, in my mind, there's not really another movie that touches it that ever impacted me this way. And so by default, losing the main character, this hit hard. Am I right? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, you know, we, we unfortunately uh, have lost several people from this movie and and you guys you know if you haven't watched some of our other videos we the three of us actually had attempted last year to put together a little bit of a zoom cast reunion with some remaining cast members and really just didn't work out um but i feel like we're just we're just getting further away from the time period of our favorite cast uh, so just wanted to take a few minutes today in this video to honor David Soul and uh, just share some of our personal thoughts and, and what he did for us. So, uh, Ben, you what do you got? Um, it's <clears throat> like you the point you made, it's it's almost like we are kind of the. Um, I don't know if you want to call us archivists or. But we're sort of we're keeping the spirit of this movie alive in right. some ways i know that there's other people that love this film and they do there's other people on um youtube and of course you know mm -hmm. salem's live then and now um that love this film just as much as we do and celebrate right. this film as much as we do but with the current generation i think this sometimes because it was a television movie this is looked at as a relic of the past it's not held at the same regard as movies that were actually in theaters like the exorcist or the shining or things like that because it was a television movie yeah it kind of gets pigeonholed as a dated property and i think that's why they're constantly trying to do it again you know we've seen it with mm -hmm. the iteration that came out in 2004 yeah. and now whenever this one that's been completed for a couple of years comes out i think we're going to see it again and yeah. uh I think for me, it's just like the, the thing that always it's it's almost like a mini family in some ways um, with regards to this cast. And I talk about it a little bit in my tribute to Mr. Soul, but I said that, you know, growing up as kind of a latchkey kid and a kid that kind of was by himself quite a bit. The television was my babysitter and mm -hmm. Salem's Lot was one of the first things I ever had recorded. Um and uh this cast you know i could recite the movie verbatim if you wanted me to i mean i have you know that cast is i don't see them as anybody outside of that even though they all had other careers mm -hmm. so it's like when each one of them goes you know in the last four years we've lost three members of the cast we lost fred willard yeah. who played crockett and then last year we lost lance which was a complete shock he was, was in his early 60s and then almost a year to the date, you know, just off by like 20 days, we lost Ben, Ben Mears. We lost David soul, who was kind of the guiding force of the movie. Right. Um, and for me, it's just, it just makes the world feel emptier uh, is the best word I can put into it because I don't think there's, there's, there's lots of other films that, that got me as a kid. And there's lots of other actors that I looked up to that some of them aren't here as well that have passed on many years ago. But for some reason, this film has always felt more personal. And I think it's because for me, I've been able to go to the location where it was and walk in the footsteps of my heroes. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like one of those things where it's very personal to me. And David Soul hit me the hardest. I thought Jeffrey Lewis was the hardest one for me, but this one hit me just harder. And I think yeah. it's because he, you know, I'm watching like these old shots. I watched the film on Friday. Um, and then as I was editing my my piece to him, you know, I used clips and, you know, Ben and Mark are our heroes mm -hmm. and they're gone. And I think that's what is hitting me the hardest is that the leads on this film 
are no longer with us. And many, I mean, probably 85% of the people that made it are gone. And it's yeah. kind of like this, it's this dying thing. And I feel like if there wasn't people like us to keep it alive, it would be forgotten. And I don't want that to happen. And I think that's why I feel like it's part of my, you know, calling to make people aware of it and to always champion it as long as I can. And I knew there was something, I don't know why I knew something was wrong with David. I, I knew he was sick. I know he had health problems, but he hadn't posted anything on YouTube in a while. And I kept saying, that's kind of weird. For a while there, he was posting something every so often. He did like the whole tribute to Salem's Lot for the 42nd anniversary. He did wow. a couple of other videos, like a Christmas video. And then it just seemed like he kind of, you know, you just didn't see him that much. There was like right. one thing that he pushed out there. I think, Sam, did you say, share with us? It was like kind of like he was like it was kind of a silly video where he was kind of I think you shared it with us for some reason. I might be forgotten uh, wrong on that yeah, one. But he, he was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. He was, was washing dishes thing. in his own kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. And he, that was like the last thing that he did. Yeah, he was referencing his wife, like, like, if you want to get some or if you want the good parts, you know, you have to do yeah, your yeah. housework, you know. Yeah. Very, funny. very, very clever. He had a very, and that's what I've read about, is that even during his last days, he still had that sense of humor. Uh, one of the things I read about is that he said they should do a new, um, like, a revamp of Starsky and Hutch with him and, and, and the main guy, Paul Glosser, I think is his name. And he was saying they should be, they would be in an, like a retirement home and solving like little cases in the retirement <laughs> home. He's like two old farts solving cases. He said, that's the way we should do it. And I said, that's kind of funny, you know, because yeah. they're always saying the best cast is the original cast. And right. I mean, I'm glad he's not suffering anymore. I could tell when I heard him talk that he had a hard time breathing sometimes. I know he was a bad, like he smoked a lot, but he quit smoking about 10 years ago. So, but he had uh, COPD, he had things like that. So, you know, I just, I'm glad he's not suffering anymore, but man, what a loss. And the last thing I'm going to say is, you know, when I found out about it and I let you guys know, and I, you know, I had two friends, my friend, John, let me know about it. And Rufus, uh, these two guys that I know, they let me know about it. It was like six in the morning when I found out. And I posted on Salem's Lot then and now, and just even on my own Instagram and the amount of people that have shown their love for this man. I think mm -hmm. that's, that's the one thing I can take away that makes me feel happy is that he was loved. And same thing with Lance. I talked about it. You talked about it, Danny, is that yeah. Lance seemed happy and sort of almost overwhelmed by the amount of people that still loved him. Yes. So yeah, yeah I, it's it's been a it's been a tough weekend for me. Um definitely, definitely. Yeah. So but that's that's my piece on it. And I, I, I will miss that man greatly. Absolutely. Sam, what have been your thoughts? Uh jumbled. You know, it's yeah. um I was telling my wife, it's so weird to hear a household name like David Soul mm -hmm. that dominated the 70s and dominated that decade. And to have the word died or dead after it just doesn't fit. Yeah. For however long it's in your head, it just it's just so hard to absorb and hard to just to get your brain wrapped around it. Um, I got Ben's text um, Friday morning, and I'm sure you did too, Danny, where mm -hmm. I just I actually woke up to that. And all I could feel is it's just like it kicked in the gut. You know, you, yeah. you just don't expect to see that name and you see however old he was and he's gone. You know, uh, right. I think the thing that I could take away from David Soul, especially in Salem's Lot, because face it, a lot of the coverage or a lot of the media go straight for the jugular of like Starsky and Hutch. That is going to be his his main dish. Everyone's going to zoom in on that. Right. And maybe, you know, his his somewhat short lived musical career. Mm -hmm. Don't give up on us was obviously a number one smash in 1977. I was probably six at the time. I remember hearing it, but I wasn't glommed onto it, but it was played a lot. And of course, my folks loved it. It was part of that singer songwriter formula that was going on at the time. You know, if you had a movie or if you're on a TV show, you can kind of take a crack at the bat. And if you hit a home run, you can get a, you know, you can get a contract with a record label for how long and make it big. But I think the thing that really, kind of resonated with me is that if there was ever an actor that convinced me that vampires are real, it was him. 
it was the way that he portrayed something that he knew wasn't right or something was going on, but how could he convince other people without being laughed at, without being bullied or just flagged off, which he is when he's starting to verbalize that something is not right. Ever since I came here, things are happening. Yeah. And if you really get into that role, you get caught up with him. You, you, you automatically support him. You want to be on his side. And suddenly you're starting to understand that, hey, this is actually happening. Yeah, of course, vampires aren't real. But as a kid and as I got into my teens and in my adult years, I still to this to this day, every time I watch it, he sounds and acts so convincing in that film that this is as real as it possibly can get. And what can he do to gather people around to get him on his side and either help people get out of town or to help fight this thing? Uh, any other vampire movie, I don't see anybody that really conveys that honesty or that kind of delivery. He just... Mm -hmm. Sometimes he didn't have to have dialogue. You could just see it in his face. The moment he stares up at the house and his face is sweating. Oh, yeah. There's there's something automatically established in that minute where you're going, something's up. You know, mm -hmm. we don't know what it is yet, but you are definitely taking a ride with him and you're going to find out what this is about and how it's going to develop. I mean, you're you're pretty much committed within the first two minutes of the movie. That's just my take on it. And I think that's my celebration of his acting. I didn't get into Starsky and Hutch when I was young because I, I was a little too young and it seemed pretty violent for the time. There was definitely some heavy hitters and heavy subject matter that I think a lot of detective shows weren't really kind of touching at that point. But the acting was phenomenal. And underneath the acting, there was just this kind of hidden slapstick comedy between the two that was often hysterical. The timing, the expressions between the two. Um, yeah that's that's kind of what i get out of it um yeah it's it's a real shame that we couldn't get in contact with him earlier if we were to do something in ferndale to be able to celebrate an anniversary or a gathering because i think if he was convinced enough to where if he knew what it was about and who we were about and how we take this film so yeah. personally so seriously as friends and as brothers I think with a little bit of convincing, I think he would have hopped on board within a minute and be able to make the trip and to be part of the celebration, not to put him on a pedestal or thrust the spotlight on him, but definitely have that interaction and to pay respect and just say a simple thank you for making something so convincing that we know is not real, but in his eyes and in his talent made it, made it real. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's funny, you know, you, you just said, that we know is not real, but you're, you know, you're talking about how he made it as real as it could be. And I think that all three of us can say that about the entire movie. Absolutely. Because, yeah. you know, if you've watched our videos before, you've heard me say that this is literally the only movie that impacted me ever the way this one did it. No, no other movie even came close but to me he's just you know I, I did watch Starsky and Hutch growing up um I was born in 71 so I was born in, in time to watch some of that stuff but yeah it, it just uh it's, in my mind everybody that's in that movie is just attached to the magic of it and you, you can watch some movies that were done in 2000 and go, wow, that's that's really CGI. Or right, that yeah. looks fake. <laughs> that's pretty lame now. But right. you watch Salem's Lot shot in the summer of 79. No CGI tricks. It was just done with genius. And it and the music was genius and the acting was genius. You see, you see David Soul go from this calm mild personality to the fury and just fear on his face when he's driving that stake in Barlow. Mm -hmm. And then he's just shaking and he looks at Mark and says, get out. And he's yeah. just shaking, man. I mean, so he, he went from that end to this end and he pulled it off so well. Yeah. yeah. It was like this, uh, this, and it's almost like a, a deflating of a balloon. If you look at him when he's so in the moment, you know, shoving Mark away, doing yeah. what he has to do and then when it's all over he's just 
still. Yeah. And it's over. And yeah, that because I use uh, I, I like I said, when I rewatched it, it's just that's that's an arc right there. Just from yeah. where he starts to where he goes. Um, well, and and also he was saying that he learned a lot from James Mason. Is that you know yes. less is more. Yes. Uh, at the end, where they you know where they confront Marjorie Glick and yeah, he, he's he's holding the cross, and you're just waiting for some verbal exchange. Like I told you so. What took you so long? He could have done that, yeah. but he just stands there in silence, holding the cross, catching his breath, and just that alone. You're like, there's so much. There's there's invisible words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the sometimes he, less is more. There. It less is more. Yeah, the way he held that cross and stayed there for a minute and just yeah. now do you believe me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, we just wanted to take a minute to uh to honor him and to remember him and just to say to all the Salem's lot people out there that uh we won't forget David Soul. And uh, as long as we're around, we're going to love this movie. And that means we're going to love him and all the other characters that made this magic happen. So, guys, I want to thank you for, you know, getting together with me to hang out and just take a minute to remember. him. Absolutely. Thank you, Danny. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. Thank you.